I'm getting ready to check out of this uh, hotel room. This is a really nice hotel, actually. Built in 1930s, maybe 1937. Um, when I came in, they already had the TV turned on, turned to some classic movie channel. Um, and anyway, look, I picked out this shirt. This is a nice shirt I got from my older brother, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Look, it's like a map of the United States with different kinds of music marked. We got bluegrass, punk over here. Um, what do we got in California? Oh, California's hip hop, metal, and the psychedelic. That must be San Francisco. And then we got the slack key for Hawaii. Anyway, I really like this shirt. I like this big radio tower. You know, I love the big radio tower. Um, anyway, uh, Joe got this for me some time ago. I used to not wear it very much because uh, it was very large. Uh, but I have that um, pandemic belly going on. I'm going to lose the pandemic belly, but certainly not going to start my diet today. And then here, look, we've got this old motel from the 30s, and they had the good sense to put in one of these chargers, so you got extra outlets. All we ever want in a hotel room is extra outlets. Really, that's all we ever want. I could charge up my camera, charge up my phone, charge up my computer. Okay, here is the map. Hold on, I've got to hold it with one hand. Here's the map that I got. Um, took me some trouble finding a map yesterday, uh, but I finally found it in the ghost town Calico. And where are we? I'm just going to outline the route today. Where are we? Where are we? Oh. Okay. Uh, here we are, uh, right where it says 66 for Route 66. Uh, I'm going to swing down and come up to Needles. Uh, there's actually the town of Oatman over here. Oatman is this kind of cool old western town. Um, they have wild burrows roaming the streets. They reenact gunfights. I've actually been to Oatman twice, so I'm not going to take the time and slow down to go there today. Swing up to Needles. And a very cute gal once told me that Snoopy's brother is from Needles. Snoopy's brother is from Needles. Um, and then I come over here, and then I come down, I guess, yeah, I come down here. That's following the path of Route 66. And there's a place called Amboy. There's some cool signage here. Uh, thanks to the people at Roadside Attractions, they let me know that there's a really cool sign in Amboy. I want to see that. And then I swing down to 29 Palms over here, swing over here. And I want to go to Big Bear. Where's Big Bear? Where is Big Bear? I think I got to go down. Yeah, I think I have to swing down and then come up to Big Bear. Yeah, over here. Now, I'm actually going to spend the night in Victorville. There's a really cool motel I want to stay in. They don't take reservations, uh, but I think I'm going to just risk it and try and find it. But if I have the time, I want to go up to Barstow. I went to Barstow yesterday, but I didn't see all that I wanted to see in Barstow. Barstow, among other things, has the oldest functioning uh, Del Taco that's still uh, thriving, still in business. Del Taco is not a food that I like, but the same cute gal who told me about needles likes Del Taco. Uh, it apparently is the closest thing that you could find to uh, Taco Stand. That is a famous taco place or a famous Mexican place in Athens, Georgia. And if you're not in Athens, Georgia, apparently Del Taco is a substitute. So I want to take a photo of the Del Taco for her and then come down to Victorville and see Roy Rogers and Dale Evans' grave and a big giant statue of Trigger. Anyway, and then I'm going to spend the night there and then just wind my way home tomorrow. So I sent this image, this is Breakfast at Denny's, to Morell and Alana. And Morell says, love that mug. And then I say, except without revisions. That's a very academic thing to say. Alana responds, as reviewer number two, Thank you for your submission. The food looks really yummy. However, the creamer appears to be hidden slightly in the background and wants to be slightly more in the foreground, except with minor revisions. And then I said, Agreed. There was also a somewhat empty spot between the ham and eggs, the void created when I moved the bowl of fruit off the plate. I will be more aware of aesthetics and symmetry in the future. To which Alana says, as reviewer number two, Thank you. I am satisfied hearing your future plans. So hopefully I will get my picture accepted. Rocket Burger appears to be a closed science fiction dine-in theater. Now it seems closed. Yeah, it seems closed. I just left. Kingman, Arizona, not too long ago, heading my way towards Needles. And I had to stop when I found this place. Had to stop. <laughs> Okay, I made it to Needles, and I found this Desi restaurant, Indian food. Uh, I like Desi Khana, that means Indian food, or South Asian food. Um, 
what is what is this like Indian restaurant doing in Needles? Uh, this is the second second Indian restaurant I've seen on this drive this morning. That's cool, but it's just not something I was expected. Anyway, I'm gonna look around and see if I can find a magnet or something. I got some chai and this chana dal like a snack, and I got some burfi at this place. Totally not expecting this to find this in Needles. Very excited. Very excited. Chai is perfect. Perfect. Okay, I'm leaving Needles now, driving to Amboy, California. Um, and uh, when I stopped, I was looking for uh, some type of souvenir from Needles, ideally a keychain that had Snoopy on it or Snoopy's brother Spike. That would have been totally ideal. I found the Indian restaurant, shocked by that. I got some chai, got some other snacks. Uh, and for those who don't know me, uh, my wife is South Asian. She was uh, born in Karachi, Pakistan. And uh, just from living with her for so long and her family, plus I was in uh, India for about seven months uh, in 2014 on a Fulbright. Because of all this, I have a pretty good familiarity with uh, South Asian food. Indian Pakistani food is different, but it's not totally different. There's some similarities. So I have a pretty good familiarity with that food. I was surprised to see it. Anyway, I go into a drugstore. There's a point to the story, I swear. Go into a drugstore, ask them, can I find a keychain? Can I find a souvenir? They send me to a restaurant that has a gift shop, Wagon Wheel. That's right, Wham. Um, and then I'm chatting with the woman because I'm friendly like that. And I said, this Indian restaurant, how long has it been there? She says it's a chain operated out of Phoenix for truck drivers. I didn't know that there's so many Indian truck drivers. I honestly didn't know. I mean, I'm not a truck driver myself. I have a stereotype of truck drivers, but I didn't know there were so many Indian truck drivers. Pakistani cab drivers in New York, that I'm familiar with. Indian truck drivers, not familiar with. But you know what? Travel is really the best form of education. See, I've already learned something today. Underground cistern. The rail cars used to line up right there, drop the water in, in there, and it'd go to a big tank, which would then feed little tanks at people's homes that were powered by gasoline pumps. We have a reverse osmosis system in a 900 and some foot deep well right now, and we're in phase one of the water testing with the county. Uh, once we get potable water, we'll be able to restore a couple of the rooms so people will be able to use them and we'll be able to start having a kitchen that serves food. Oh, you can right. open that up again, it's like a motel? We're gonna restore the little ones in the front and have them like little individual Airbnb cabins. The intents to restore them to kind of how they were in the 50s. Should, should be pretty cool. The, the uh, water is the, the key to everything. Okay, so I got some of that on video. This guy, Ken, who runs this sort of like souvenir shop um, right here behind me, which is right next to, uh, Where's the sign? Yeah, right next to this place. He said they're trying to restore it. Uh, they need to get water. Once they can get functioning water, this thing's gonna open up. He said he gets 30 calls a day sometimes who wanting to rent the rooms here. Um, and apparently it's quite, quite popular with Europeans. He said uh, Germans and French really, really are fascinated by the lore of Route 66. He said, uh, he even said, I see German people come in with tattoos of that sign. So I think when this thing gets restored and opens up, I mean, it'll be a, a really, really cool and probably expensive hipster Airbnb. Okay, that was unexpected. Another little adventure on the road trip. That's why we take road trips. All right, the thing that I was looking for um, was on the way to 29 Palms, this weird statue called simply Foreign Body. That's what it's known as, Foreign Body. Uh, in the Roadside Attractions website, they call it Foreign Body. Um, and I was driving on this road. There's like a soft shoulder, as they say, just kind of like desert sand on either side of the road. And I drive by the address where this thing is supposed to be. It's a very strange statue. I'll have to put a, an image of it uh, in the video. Very, very odd looking statue. Um, and I don't see it. I, it's you know, not on the road. I don't see it on the left or the right. So I'm thinking, oh, I should just you know, find a place to turn around, go back and do more proper investigation. And there's this big black truck right on my ass riding me. Not his fault, not the black truck's fault, my fault. I impulsively decide to just jump off the road to see if I could just do a quick U-turn. As soon as I got off the road, I feel the car, my little Prius, nice little Prius, sink in the sand, and I'm like, oh, blank, I'm screwed. This has happened to me before. Um, and the car is spinning, the wheels are spinning, no four-wheel drive. Of course, the black truck's long gone. 
and I realize I can't move. I, you know, try and go rock back and forth and can't move anything. I call AAA, that takes like 20 minutes with this damn automated, damn automated machine. I can't just speak to a human being. Um, and then after I had negotiated that, some guy just came up, lived nearby, nice guy. I think his name was Lumberto or Lamberto, Lumberto. I think that was his name. He seems to know what he's doing. He says, let me try. He spends a good 15, you know, maybe not 15, maybe five, 10 minutes figuring it out, rocking the car back and forth. I'm pushing it, we're pushing it together. Um, and he's starting to get it. He's starting to get enough motion on the car that we can get the car out of the sand. And while he's doing that, an older gentleman named Kent got out of his truck and he said, I got a rope in my truck if we need it. Um, but by that point, uh, uh, Lumberto was so close. Uh, Kent was smoking a cigarette when he got out of his truck and um, before his cigarette was even finished, we had gotten the car out of the sand on the road. I offered both the money. They didn't want to take any money. They just, you know, thanked me, or I thanked them. I thanked them profusely and they took off. Then, now I'm determined to see this foreign body statue. I turn around, go back to where I think it is, drive off the road. I made sure the road was a little harder, like, you know, like more of a flat, solid dirt road. Um, I don't see it. I don't think that statue is there at all. I don't think that foreign body statue is still in existence. It's certainly not where Roadside's attraction says it was. So anyway, didn't see that. Okay, these things happen. Life is sometimes unexpected. Now I'm running late to Big Bear. Uh, I called them on the phone. There's no more boat cruises today. If I miss the one at 2 p.m. today, I'm out of luck. Um, I gotta go to a dentist tomorrow in San Diego, so I cannot show up to the two o'clock one tomorrow. Um, so now um, I'm just gonna drive as fast as I can, not get a speeding ticket to Big Bear. Uh, the GPS says I'll get there at 1.30 or 1.34, which would be ample time for a 2 p.m. boat cruise. However, you know, the GPS may not be accurate. I may hit traffic. Maybe someone has an accident. Uh, inshallah, not me have an accident. But anyway, things can happen to delay me. Um, and I do have to pee. Um, but I'm going to hold out to a Big Bear because um, I think the Beastie Boys have a song like that. No pee till Big Bear.